Hi, I'm Scott with Flex Your Rights. We talked last time about some of the ways that a police encounter can get out of hand and even go horribly wrong. And a couple of people asked the same question in response to that video, which is, what do you do if police say they smell marijuana? And this is actually a really tough question, and uh, for reasons that I'll get into, it's, it's something that you might want to learn more about, even if you don't actually use marijuana. Uh, the truth is that you don't have a lot of options in this situation, but let me break it down for you, and I'll just try to be as helpful as I can. The reason this is such a big issue is that the smell of marijuana by itself is considered probable cause to believe there's a crime going on. So as long as pe police uh, smell it or claim that they smell it, uh, in most situations they can automatically search you. And uh, unfortunately the courts trust police officers to be honest about this, which creates all sorts of problems. And, and that's why it's something that can affect you whether or not you're a marijuana user. The smell of marijuana is something that the officer might bring up as an issue to sort of manufacture probable cause after you've refused to search. And so that's why it's a big deal. And so let's talk about, about some of the ways that, that you can protect yourself from having this happen to you. First and foremost, we want to eliminate the possibility that you're actually running around reeking of marijuana. Believe it or not, a lot of police officers aren't liars, and they aren't going to just say that they smell pot if they don't. So most of the time when an officer claims that they smell marijuana, it's because they actually smell it, and that's the reason that they think there's something going on. That's why they want to search. So, so first of all, we have to eliminate that factor, and that's going to reduce your odds of getting jammed up considerably. Above all, this means that you aren't ever smoking marijuana in your car. Smoking in the car is just the best and most efficient way in the world to get arrested for marijuana. We get emails at FlexiRights every day from people who got in trouble, and nine times out of ten it had something to do with smoking in or around a vehicle. That's just the number one way that it happens in my experience. And and there's no there's no reason for it. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, if you're so impatient that you can't, you know, drive for 30 minutes without sparking something, well, then you're going to hate being subjected to a weekly urinalysis when you're on probation after getting busted, inevitably. So cool it with that for your own good, please. And beyond that, if there's anything in your car that might smell like marijuana, for example, a bag of it or an apparatus or what have you, you know, keep that stuff stored away and sealed up. And better yet, keep it out of the car, you know, it really shouldn't be there. Unfortunately, making sure your car doesn't smell like marijuana might not be enough. It's really just the beginning. If the officer becomes really suspicious of you, they can lie or just imagine it, even when it isn't there. And for, for you, that can be just as bad as the real thing, because it, it means that, that they now believe they have probable cause to go ahead and search the vehicle, or at least that's what they're claiming. Another important thing is, is just to make sure that you keep your car clean in general, because when police see a dirty car, they think of drugs. So if your car is clean, the officer is just a lot less likely to, to even start with you. And again, this is a preventative measure, but you know it's, it's important. It really does make a difference. Along these same lines, remember that police profile like crazy. So if you're running around looking super cool all the time, they're going to notice you. I, you know, I would never recommend that you tone down your style. You know, it's a free country and you shouldn't be afraid to be yourself and be awesome. But also just be aware that if you have a distinctive look or a flashy vehicle, it just means you're more likely to get harassed. You know, it's bullshit, but, but be ready for it. I get emails all the time from biker dudes and people like that who don't even do drugs but are getting pulled over and harassed and searched by police all the time for dope. It's just a dumb stereotype, but, but it's also the reality of how our laws are enforced, particularly under the war on drugs. Think about what, what you have with you, for example, if, if you do fit a profile or if you have a history of getting harassed by police, you factor that into your decision making about whether to make yourself vulnerable to a criminal arrest. Now the last thing, and this is perhaps the most important point of all, is that you always want to assert your rights no matter what. Keep in mind that, that when police say, for example, that they smell marijuana, it might just be a trick. They might just be trying to judge your reaction or scare you, and they're looking for sort of these verbal or, or nonverbal you know, cues from you, your eyes darting around or your breathing heating up and these kinds of things that uh, police officers deliberately try to provoke you to, to create those reactions when they're suspicious. 
it may not be their intention to do a full search of the vehicle um, unless you give off some sign of guilt. And so things like making references to marijuana, you look stoned, you smell like pot, these things could just be a trick. And so you don't want to panic at that point and waive your rights. You always want to refuse the search. If they're asking to search the vehicle, you always want to say no. And if they're claiming to smell marijuana, you want to respond the way that an innocent person would, would respond. And hopefully you are innocent because you haven't been smoking pot in your car. So you say, you know, officer, I don't smell anything. Or, you know, officer, whatever you're, you're smelling, it didn't come from in here. You know, it may or may not stop them, but it, but it gives you a better chance of getting out of the encounter. And most importantly, if you do flex your rights and uh, ultimately you're searched illegally, if you're arrested as a result of illegally obtained evidence, all of these things can be challenged in a court of law. Now, probable cause derived by something like marijuana odor is hard to disprove in court. It's very hard. But an officer who, for example, would make a claim like that dishonestly may very well have a track record of making the same claim every time they pull somebody over and, and the search is refused. And so you got to keep in mind that there's a track record here and a, and a good attorney can get in there in a court of law and maybe even win your case. So don't give up. That's the important thing is to sort of be prepared for all of these possible outcomes. And this is a particularly tricky situation and one that sort of lends itself to a little bit of corruption and dishonesty on the part of police officers. But if you're ready for it and if you make the right choices, if you keep your car clean, if you assert your rights, even this situation is something that you can have a chance of, of driving away from safely. And finally, please do check out our website at flexyourrights.org. We have a, a detailed Frequently Asked Questions page there that we've spent years putting together, so you'll find a lot of interesting information. And our videos, of course, are all available for free here on YouTube. But our uh, excellent uh, instructional videos with live actors and cops and all that stuff, those are also available uh, on DVD for a small donation through our website. So if you can afford to make a donation and you'd like to get the DVD, we really do appreciate your support. So thanks again, and be safe out there.